You must be exhausted from your overseas business trip. I'm sorry to ask this of you all of a sudden, but would you mind not coming by my place today? Yeah, I'm totally beat. Is something wrong? I wasn't planning on coming by your place today, even if you asked me, Layla. Yeah, I don't want you to come, so I thought I'd let you know. It certainly is my place now, but up until last week, it was your place. So, I just assumed that this is where you'd be coming. If I hadn't said anything, you would have gone back to the wrong place, huh? Huh? I'm kind of confused now. What's going on? Well, I'm already living in the place you were staying in before you left. So it's mine now. And I don't want you coming here today. I don't get it. Is this some kind of joke or something? Look, when you've decided on your next place, just let me know. And I'll have your things sent over, okay? I'll just hold on to it all until then. If you won't be needing any of your furniture or appliances, just let me know and I can make use of them. You won't be needing your dryer or your iron, right? I can take them off your hands. Okay, you need to hold on a second and back this whole conversation up. Why have you started living at my place? I never approved of anything like this. I was always planning on living there by myself when I got back. But you did approve of me staying here. Don't you remember? What are you talking about? Well, it is your signature on this paperwork transferring your lease over to me. <laughs> Seriously, what are you talking about? What documents? I genuinely have no idea what you're talking about. There's no use going into details because you still probably wouldn't have much idea of what I'm talking about. But, if I were to put it plainly, I have documents signing over the lease to your place. And it is definitely your signature on these papers. I have never signed any such documents. Really? But this is definitely your signature on these papers. Next time you sign something, you should make sure to read all of the fine print first. Huh? Are you telling me that you tricked me into giving you the lease? And the rights to my apartment somehow? Oh, you shouldn't say things like that. People might get the wrong idea. You legally gave the lease up to me. You shouldn't grumble about it now. Why don't you just find your next place as fast as you can? Does God know about this? What did you tell him? Of course your brother agrees with me. That this is our new place, where we live, and you don't. He was worried about you when he heard you weren't coming back. But when I told him I, I heard you had moved abroad, he calmed right down. That's because he thought I'd moved abroad. If he knew that I hadn't, he wouldn't be all relaxed about everything. You've just taken advantage of his trust. He's a kind man, so he'd never doubt his wife. Doubt? What's there to doubt? <laughs> I haven't done anything that should be doubted, if you ask me. You must be having fun doing everything you can to fake your ignorance like that. It's just you and me, Layla, so there's no need to put on a show. Just be honest and tell me what you're really thinking. Why did you trick me out of my home? Were you jealous of my beautiful apartment in the heart of the city? There's no way you're going to get me to admit to having tricked you into giving this place to me. Do you think I'm stupid? If I admit anything here, you'll just have the chat log as proof. Didn't you kind of just admit to it all just now with what you just wrote? Anyhow, if you're not going to return my home to me, I'll have to see a lawyer and sue you. You know, this is no laughing matter, don't you? You're going to sue me? Go ahead. Sue me. That'll be a laugh. I've got a lawyer already, so go right ahead and sue me. He's a super high-class lawyer in the field of real estate. So, you're not going to stand a chance. Wait, you have a lawyer? What's your lawyer's opinion on the situation? Naturally, he said there were no problems at all. He's an expert in the law, 
and you signed the documents that he prepared. There's absolutely nothing weird about what has happened. You understand that, right? No, there's something weird unraveling. I've never read a document like these in my entire life. I'd remember if I had. You're swindling me. I knew that you were a scam artist. I felt off about you since the day we met. It is your signature on these papers. There's no scam or anything else going on here. More importantly, there are way too many of your things left in this apartment. You're not going to throw any of it away, are you? Oh, I'm not so rotten a person that I carelessly throw away any of your personal items. Why do you think so little of me? The precise reason that I asked you not to is because you're exactly the rotten sort of person that would carelessly discard my personal items. Wow, you've really changed since you've been out of the country. Did something happen to you? Did you go crazy? Is this some different personality you adopted from your time abroad? Or do you just feel uppity because you got to go abroad? I'm not affecting some sort of other personality. I am acting just the same as I did prior to leaving. Just because I had to go on a business trip out of the country doesn't mean that I think any differently. Whoa, you actually hung up that article you were interviewed in on your wall? <laughs> How lame. Honestly, that's really embarrassing. Would you please cut this out? I hung it up because it was from a famous British economics publication that I like to read. I really hate that part about you. You're just so into the UK, aren't you? Ugh, it's so lame. What's so great about them anyway? Didn't we beat them in a war like 300 years ago? Uh, could it be that you stole my apartment because you were jealous of my success? Well, I guess I can't blame you. Hey, the only difference between you and I is that I was raised in a poor household. You might have been able to study various things due to being born into a blessed environment, but that doesn't make you better than me. I never had an environment like that, but I couldn't just go study whatever I wanted. I was interested in lots of things. I just couldn't get ahead in the world. That's why... I've decided to take your apartment and get ahead of you. Oh, is that why? It's not that I don't understand what you're trying to say. But also, what you're trying to say doesn't really justify the means you are using. Taking things like my apartment makes you nothing more than a common thief, right? Earlier you called me a scam artist. But now you're going to call me a thief? You must really hate those who are born to a lower class than you. What sort of false accusations are you trying to lay at my feet because you think less of me from being born into poverty? I'm not trying to belittle you for your upbringing or anything like that. And I haven't called you anything that isn't true. You were literally trying to scam me out of my apartment. Oh, shut up. It doesn't matter what you say. I live in this beautiful apartment right in the heart of the city now. And from this point on, You'll just have to find somewhere else. I've already contacted my lawyer to get all of the names on everything switched out. So, good day to you. Congratulations on earning yourself a criminal record. What do you mean? I don't have a criminal record. I'm sorry, but I've got recording equipment in my apartment. They've recorded all of your conversations. You do realize that I run a company that makes home security tools, right? Do you really think my place wouldn't be outfitted with the top-of-the-line systems? Huh? Wait... Where are they? Could it be that you were thinking of destroying the recording equipment and the records of what you've said? I'm not going to tell you where they're located. But even if you did destroy them, it would be meaningless. What? Then what am I going to do? At this point, the only option for you is to get arrested. Naturally, I'll be filing charges with the police. Arrested? But it's your signature on the contract transferring the property to me. Yes, about the conversation you mentioned earlier with your lawyer, Layla. I know that you talked to him about forging my signature, because you were in my apartment when you did. It's been recorded, so I think that'll be more than enough evidence. You can't really have that. Your lawyer will also be charged as a criminal. You called him a high-class, well-educated lawyer? 
But just how much did you pay him? I took out a loan of $40,000 and paid it all to him. You went so far as to take out a $40,000 loan? To hire some corrupt lawyer to help you forge my signature on some documents? Just because you're jealous of me? Do you really think you could get a good lawyer to do something so illegal for only 40 grand? I should have hired a hitman after all. I didn't know it would end up like this. That's an absurd line of thought. But you're certainly right that if you had, it would have at the very least have worked out better for you. I think if you were going to pay some corrupt two-bit lawyer 40 grand, you would have been better off just paying for a hitman. Hey, please don't stop fighting with your lawyer. You're both so loud. I can hear everything that you're saying to one another. Um, you're listening in on our conversation? Doesn't that make you the criminal? What's the problem with eavesdropping on things that are occurring in your own home? That is absurd. Anyways, as you apparently know, the super high-class lawyer is here with me. He's here so I can easily charge you in case you have come here to trespass. How would me entering my own home qualify as trespassing? It's not your home. You signed it away to me. Also, we're going to call the police now because you've violated our privacy and they'll haul you off to prison for what you've done. This house is mine, so it's a crime to be spying on us like this. Well, if it was your home, I guess you'd be correct. But given that I have the evidence to show that you've forged the signature, wouldn't it still make it my home? And therefore, nothing I've done is wrong. By the way, where's your lawyer gone off to? What? He's not here. Could it be that he ran away on you? Are you going to have to figure this out all on your own? A lawyer would understand how screwed they are in this situation. So it's only natural that your lawyer bolted on you. He bolted? That isn't funny. He wouldn't do that. I paid him a lot of money, though. Well, a lawyer who would forge a signature probably isn't the most honorable guy. I'm sure a man like that wasn't about to go down with a ship. I mean, why would you expect someone like that to stick with you? It's too bad, but this was to be expected. Wait, what am I supposed to do without a lawyer? He will be arrested. That's the only thing that I can be certain of. Furthermore, the only outcome I can see for this level of fraud that you've committed is for you to be sent to prison. But without a doubt, you will end up serving time. Go to prison? No, there's no way. You're definitely just trying to scare me for what I did. I can't get arrested, though. You've got to do something. There's nothing that I can do at this point. I mean, the more severity that you're punished, Layla, the happier I'll be. You think saying something like that to me is okay? Haven't you yourself committed a crime? You invaded my privacy. You do understand that that is also a crime, right? When I go to prison, you'll be coming right alongside me. Are you going to sue me for invading your privacy? For looking at my own security footage? And do you think I would be thrown in jail for something like that? I'm telling you this in advance. If I can bring you down with me, then I'm going to do just that. I'm prepared to go to prison if it means that I get to put you in there alongside me. What would that resolve? Are you just jealous of me? Do you despise me that much? Just how much do you hate me anyhow? Oh, I hate you so much that it actually makes me sick to my stomach. Just the sight of you makes me queasy. I hate you. I hate your friends. I hate everything that you have. It all just makes me want to puke. You're just jealous and wanted my apartment. How am I to be convicted that you hate everything about me, but at the very same time you try to steal my apartment? You have no aesthetic of your own. So you thought you could just adopt my things as your own? In the end, was harassing me worth all of this? Quit trying to act like you're all that. It's disgusting. You're so proud of the life of privilege you were born into. You think that it's all talent, but... Actually, you were just lucky enough to be born into a rich family. That is certainly not the case. I do acknowledge the relative privilege I was born into, but I am not some spoiled rich kid like you're making me out to be. Aren't you the one acting like you're more than you are? By the way, I have one more piece of information to share with you, but you may find it inconvenient. Well, would you like to hear what it is? All right, I'll bite. 
What is it? You were sleeping around with that lawyer, weren't you? There's no use in pleading for your innocence at this point. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. Unfortunately, for both of us, I have videos that prove it. Did you think that I would have just bugged my apartment for sound? The camera reacts to body temperature, so it turns on in the presence of people when the automatic recording function is on. And that function is typically on whenever I'm not home. That is to say, it was on the entire time I've been overseas on business. Furthermore, notifications have been sent to my security company. When they get a notification like that, they usually send someone over to investigate the situation. A security guard? They're coming here? No. I contacted them earlier and told them not to come. I wanted to see your panicked face with my own eyes. So I decided to handle it myself. What is wrong with you? You've got some freaky kinks, lady. I don't want to hear that coming from you, Layla. Given the sick things I know you're into now. Then, did you know we had started living here several days ago? Yes, it was very amusing watching and listening to all the recordings. Excuse me for acting all clueless, but it was much funnier that way. What is up with you? You're really a freak. I truly feel sorry for you. I know it's going to suck losing your position as partner at work, and to go through a divorce on top of that. It's really too bad, but your life is already over. There's nothing you can do at this point. Uh, what have I lost? Divorced? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I already know that Gordon cheated on me when we were dating. So there really shouldn't be any issues. Besides, this old plan was formed because I was so into him. What are you trying to say? I put this apartment into his name, not my own. I thought if perhaps the scam was uncovered, then my darling husband would just take the fall. The only one who's going to be arrested for any of this is that poor old fool. You've done quite the job. Sticking your crimes to my brother, haven't you? I wouldn't have gone through with it if any of the risk was on me, you know. I'm not stupid. But Gordon? Well, he's a different matter entirely. Somebody that overwhelmingly positive and friendly is so easy to take advantage of. I bet he admits his guilt himself to protect his wife. He'll tell them that it was due to some blunder on his behalf that he ended up putting his little sister's home into his name. I'm sure he'll just selflessly fall on the blade and repent for his crimes. That's just the kind of noble man he is. You really are the lowest of the low, aren't you? As far as what you've done to me is concerning. I honestly couldn't care less because I will suffer no ill effects. But the fact that you've betrayed my poor, kind brother is something that I'll definitely never be able to forgive. You're just deciding that you'll never forgive me before even giving it a shot? Well, I don't need your forgiveness. I'm not you and Gordon. I would gladly watch the two of you slowly pulverize. It would be a great joy to watch as a large hydraulic press turns you into a little more than jelly. Just to let you know, I'm with Gordon right now. You're with Gordon? Yes. He's seen the entirety of this conversation. In addition, he has also seen the footage of you and your lawyer from the security cameras. Now there is no way out of this. You've been caught. The only thing you can do now is accept the situation you've put yourself in. Seriously? Is this really happening? No matter how kind and able my brother is, now that it has been shown this evidence of your crime, there is no way that you'll be able to deceive him. You've been caught in two lies. You've committed crimes of fraud and adultery. It has all come to light, and there is no way to wriggle your way out of the consequences. There is evidence clearly demonstrating what you've done, so you will certainly be going to prison. And you'll be forced to compensate Gordon and I for any damages we have incurred from your crimes. I'm never going to forgive you two for what you've done to me. I won't let this be my end. I'll get out someday and take my revenge on the two of you. I swear to God I will. Are you threatening me? I'm very scared. Really? Truly? 
I mean, threatening your victims really show that you have absolutely no remorse. This is just going to extend your sentence, you know. They aren't going to let out a criminal who feels no remorse for their crimes that they've committed. I don't care if I do get caught threatening you like this. I will destroy both of your lives. I will tear everything from you. I'll make you wish you were dead. Wow, that is a very clear and direct threat. Why do you think that you need to take revenge upon us? The victims of this situation? I really have not the faintest idea what either of us have done to you. Shut up. You're rich. Ugh, I hate all you rich trust fund brats. You should all die. You're just unskilled sacks of flesh who get to coast by living the good life because of who gave birth to you. It might be true that we are blessed with the situation we're born into, but that doesn't mean we haven't worked hard or struggled for anything that we now have. I don't think that a person's background is reason for it to be morally acceptable to commit fraud against somebody. People should be treated equally, regardless of the station to which they're born into. I worked very hard to get where I am today. You don't start a successful company just because you have money. What hard work. You were just lucky enough to be born into a wealthy family. Anybody could achieve success with your privilege. Well, it shouldn't be much more than a minute left until the police reach my apartment. You might want to redo your makeup before they haul you out in handcuffs. Ugh, you just continue to mock me until the very end. That is why I hate you. You laugh at the miserable masses as they struggle to survive, while you sit in your gilded high-rise. I will absolutely never forgive you two for what you've done to me. Remember that. Remember that I will get a whole revenge on you. You will have your revenge on me? Do you think you're in a movie? Why are you talking like that? Could it be that you're the one affecting a personality? After that, Layla was arrested. She was sentenced to two years in prison. She was such a proud woman. The judge could see Layla wasn't truly sorry for her crimes. In the end, it appeared that the thought of continuing to stand trial was too much for her, so she never appealed the decision the court came to. Even if she did try to appeal, it would have just been tossed out, though. The corrupt lawyer she'd been sleeping with was also arrested soon after. It appears he had been involved in several other similar scam cases. Because he fled the scene of the crime, no extenuating circumstances were taken into consideration, and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. They were also both ordered to pay my brother and I back for damages, and for what they had done to us, post-sentencing. Long days await the two of them as they work to pay off all of those damages. Hey boss, just letting you know, I'm gonna head home a little early. See you tomorrow. Hang on, it's not time to leave yet. Why are you leaving so early? Mmm, my stomach hurts, so I'm gonna get out of here. You've been leaving this whole week. You left early last week too. Don't you think that's a little too much? Do you think I'm lying about not feeling good? That's so rude. I really don't feel good. If you don't feel well, then you're free to go to the doctor if you think you need to. Just make sure you come back with a doctor's note. I hate the doctor. I know that I can just sleep it off. I don't want to go. Plus, it's always crowded and full of sick people. Yeah, it's a doctor's office. How old are you? You're about the same age as my son. Who likes the doctor? I'm telling you, you've been leaving work early too much lately. It's going to count in his unexcused absence if you don't get a doctor's note. Would you like me to drive you there? No, I don't. Enough chatter. I'm going home now. Do not leave without a valid reason or getting a note from a doctor. Do you really want this job? Of course I do. Why would you even ask me that? If I didn't, I wouldn't show up to work every day. Yeah, but when you do show up, you don't look like you really want to be here. You've only been here for two months. Do you know in that time, you've committed over 50 work violations? Huh? I never heard anything about that, lol. 
They're mostly from you leaving early or taking unexcused days off, especially on days when you had essential training but had a no-call, no-show. For me, though, it's all the times you've left early. The other day, we asked you to go out and pick up something for the office, and you just went straight home without getting anything. You were trying to run off with company money, weren't you? What was I supposed to do? I started feeling sick out of nowhere, so I went back home. I've always had a weak immune system ever since I was a kid. I get sick super easily. And it just so happened my phone died while I was out, so I couldn't let anyone know. I wasn't trying to take any money. It just totally slipped my mind that I had it. Oh well. Like I've said a hundred times, if you don't feel good, you should go to the doctor. If anyone is going to start feeling sick, it's the other people in the office. Oh yeah? Why is that? Because you give yourself manicures at your desk. The people around you want to throw up from smelling nail polish all day long. You stink up the whole office. Almost everyone in the office has reported you for it. Really? I don't think it smells bad at all. Just because somehow you don't think it smells bad doesn't mean no one does. We have to open the windows to circulate the stench out of the room. Everyone gets drenched in sweat because the AC is useless with the window open. People are going to start getting heat stroke. People are getting really sick from smelling nail polish all day. One woman actually fainted. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Is that why the windows are always open? I thought you were all a bunch of idiots that didn't know how an AC worked. LOL. No, we're grown adults. We know how air conditioning works. We've warned you about your behavior on numerous occasions. Oh, yeah. I kind of remember you saying something about that. But come on! I should be able to at least paint my nails at work. It's not too much to ask, is it? It makes me look super cute. Plus, it boosts my motivation. In fact, why doesn't everyone try it? This isn't a beauty salon. It's your job. From now on, painting your nails at work is forbidden. If you would like to paint your nails, do it on your own time at home. What? What about all the clients I meet and people in other departments at the company? I have to look cute for everyone so they like me. We always have to make a good impression on other people, right? You're very clearly missing the point. You should start with making a good impression on the people in your immediate area. You can't just do whatever you want at work. When you're here, you have to do your job. This isn't a place for leisure. Wow. That sounds so boring. LOL. That office is so drab and depressing. I never wanted to work there. I really just wanted to be a secretary to the comedy president or something. How long is it going to take for that to happen? No matter where you go, it's not going to be all frills and stylish decor. There's no need for that here. People come here to take their job seriously and work hard. Secretary? Why would you think you could immediately move up to being a secretary? You just graduated college and barely know anything about this job. There's no way you'd be a secretary yet. Especially with your attitude. LOL, why not? Being a secretary looks super duper easy. All I gotta do is wear a cute dress and smile next to the company president. I think I'm capable of doing that, LOL. I'm good at being pretty. That sounds very conceited. What would the point of that job even be? You're completely misunderstanding what a secretary's duties are. A secretary is an extremely busy position. It is? But all the TV shows I watch make it seem like all I've got to do is show up and look good for the boss. So I figured, since I'm totally gorgeous, it would be the perfect job for me. I bet. All the guys in the office would be fighting over me. I've been coming to work every day so I could get promoted to secretary. I really don't think you know what the meaning of work means. Every job on earth requires you to show up every day you're scheduled to be there. If you don't change your attitude and start actually doing your job, you'll never be promoted to anything, let alone a secretary. Whatever. I don't care. 
I'll just complain to HR that I am the victim of power harassment. Who would ever believe that? We have mountains of evidence and witnesses that can prove your misconduct. I'll make them believe me. LOL, as long as a hot young girl cries. There isn't a man on earth that would listen to her. It's a tactic that a grandma like you would never be able to use. I'll even bring my boyfriend with me when I file my complaint. Insulting me is only making your situation worse. Just because you cry doesn't mean you'll get your way. The world doesn't work like that. And what are you saying you'll bring your boyfriend? Why would you bring someone that has absolutely no relation to this job to try and help you? What do you mean? I hope you're sitting down because this is going to blow your mind. My boyfriend is... The son of the owner of the company. His name is Danny. What? I repeat, I'm dating the owner's son. And one day, he's going to run things and I'll be his wife. How crazy is that? Which means that I can get away with whatever I want. I'm not sure what to say. What makes you think you can get away with anything? Oh wow, Grandma. I think you're going senile already. As soon as he becomes the head of the company, I'll be promoted to a boss or something. Which means, if anyone tries to go against me, I can just fire them. I think You'd better hurry up and get on my good side. Excuse me? Your lack of understanding about how things work is actually astonishing. What makes you think you'll be able to do that? Like I said, my hubby is going to be the boss one day. And when he is, I'm going to fire you and put you out on the streets, Grandma. LOL. The heir to the company is my son. What? Danny is my son. Now that you mention it, he's been saying lately how some weird random girl has been following him around and bothering him. Ah, now it all makes sense. What? Danny is your son? I thought he was the owner's son. Both are true. He's my son and the owner's son. So that means... I'm married to the owner and president of this company. In other words, I'm living your dream. No way. I never knew that. You must be the only one. Everyone else knew about that from day one. If you actually ever came to work for once, maybe you would have found out. Why are you just a department manager? Why aren't you higher up or have more power? I don't know where you get that idea. My job is to train all new hires like you. I go around to every department in the company, not just the one you're in. Oh, I didn't know that. Either way, part of my job is reporting everything about the new hires to the owner. In the event that an employee is not fulfilling their obligations at this job, there's a very good chance they will be terminated. Hang on, I'm Danny's girlfriend. There's no way I'd ever be fired. Is that what you think? It doesn't matter who you think you are or he is. It has nothing to do with this job. Either way, Danny said he doesn't have a girlfriend. In fact, you're harassing him by trying to follow him around this much. He said that? Yes, and taking that into consideration, I don't feel that you're a good fit for this company. I believe that there are more than enough reasons to end your employment here. Wait, 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 wait. Please, don't fire me. Well, we really don't need someone who isn't going to take this job seriously. It's a bad influence on the other new hires. You've shown no signs of wanting to change your attitude towards the job or your co-workers. I'm within my right to move forward with your termination. I'm so sorry. Please forgive me. What are you sorry for? Not showing up to work, leaving early without a valid excuse, the chemical warfare you unleashed on the office with your manicures? Or maybe for pretending to date my son and going on a fictitious power trip? Threatening to fire anyone that displeased you like some sort of office dictator? Mm, I'm sorry for all of it. You haven't taken this job seriously since day one. You must still think you're a college student. Your mind isn't in the right place. I said I was sorry. I promise not to skip work anymore or bother anyone in the office. I get it. I was wrong for doing all of that. Anyone with eyes could see what you were doing was wrong. 
There's no use in trying to make up for it now. Luckily for you, you've only been here for two months. I'll give you one final chance to correct your behavior. Don't make me regret giving you another chance. You're going to take a heavy pay cut from all the times you've skipped work or left early. The next time it happens, you're gone. Do I make myself clear? Yes, I understand everything. I'm really so, so, so sorry. I promise to work hard. Please don't fire me. It's up to you. And if you start doing what you're supposed to, I hope you have what it takes to turn it all around. The next day, Mandy came to work on time. The first thing she did was apologize to me and her other co-workers for how she had been behaving. She's been really working hard and doing what's expected of her. She's performing well and she's really matured lately. We've actually given her some more responsibility, which she's been handling well. She's no longer looked at as just a new hire anymore. That doesn't mean we haven't been strict with her. The other people she entered the company with have already moved up to different positions. But she's really putting in the work to show that she's taking this job seriously. I think she's made up for the past. Let's hope she can keep up the good work. It's about time for dinner. When are you coming home? Ugh, none of your business. Why don't you just eat without me? You promised to have dinner with your family as much as possible. Remember? Besides, I'm worried because lately you come home at such late hours. Uh, you're worried about me? <laughs> Aren't you just worried about yourself? You're my foster mom. You're only there to make sure that I don't do anything bad. That's it. Don't say that. You're like family to me. That's good and all, but if I were your real daughter, you should be getting angry like a normal parent would. I'm not your real child, so you're trying your best not to get angry at me, right? That's not it. I'm really worried about you. I don't get angry with you because I want to respect your feelings. If something's bothering you, I want to know. Why are you staying out so late recently? If you respect my feelings, could you just leave me alone? Why don't I have to talk to you anyway? That's because it's getting darker much earlier these days. Even now, it's pitch black. If you have a reason to be late coming home, please let me know. Ugh, you're so annoying. I don't want to go home. Don't you get it? Being my foster parent is no different from being a stranger. When my real parents come to pick me up, this'll all be over. I don't want to be bossed around by someone who's barely involved in my life. Cassandra, even so, I'm still worried about you. I have no intention of getting involved just halfway. If you're ever in trouble... Whatever. I don't need dinner today. I'm gonna eat at a friend's house. I'll be back later, so don't message me anymore. Wait a minute, Cassandra. I just have to behave well in front of the social workers, right? I won't make you look bad. Cassandra, I got a call from your teacher saying that you haven't gone to school. Where are you? You left the house in your uniform this morning, right? You're a traitor. Huh? I had no idea. Foster parents get a monthly allowance? You only look after me because you wanted the money, right? What are you talking about? Yes, I do get some money as an allowance, but I didn't decide to look after you for the money. <laughs> I don't want to hear your sweet talk. You actually think that I'm a bother, right? I was a bit easier to handle when I was little, but now you think I'm not worth the trouble, right? Of course you'd prefer a more obedient kid. What are you talking about? That's not true. Oh, well, I'm glad for just having you in my life. I'm planning on leaving, so you should think about finding a new foster child. I'm sorry for being a bother to you so far. I love you. Thank you for everything so far. Cassandra, what do you mean? Are you going to leave the house? Hey, don't decide something like that by yourself. Let's have a proper talk. Please give me a reply. Cassandra, please, I'm begging you. 
I'm sorry for reminding you of that sort of stuff. Mommy loves you. I love you just the same now as when we first met. I was really happy when you came to our home. I gave up because I couldn't give birth to my own children and was so hopeless because both me and your dad love children. Of course, it's true we would be over the moon if we were able to have a child of our own, but we love you as if you were our own. As your foster parents, we will certainly lose the right to be with you once your real parents come to pick you up. I am probably a failure of a foster parent to say this while taking care of you, but I thought of you many times as if you were my real daughter. You've been living with us for eight years, right? There is no other word apart from family that can label our relationship. I thought that one day I had to talk to you about getting the allowance. I'm sorry for not telling you about it earlier, but it's the truth that I don't care for the money. I want to be with you, even if I don't get any allowance. Both your dad and I honestly think that from the bottom of our hearts. Is that really true? Of course. Can you tell me how you feel? You don't want to stay with us anymore? No, that's not it. I don't remember the exact reason anymore. But I don't want to go back to a life where I wasn't allowed to leave the house and wasn't really fed any food. Now, my life is too happy. Then why do you stay out late and even think about leaving us? That's because my real dad came to see me. Huh? He says he's got a really steady job now, so we could start living together again. I was wondering what his intentions were after all this time. But he still actually is my legal guardian, right? Well, I thought I would leave so that I didn't cause any future trouble for you guys. I can't believe it. I haven't heard anything from the Children's Bureau. What? Really? Mom, I'm sorry. I believed everything he told me. That's where I heard that foster parents are given an allowance. Without questioning it, I just believed that you guys were after the money. No, that's fine. I was wrong for not talking to you about things. Besides, what you said last time totally hit the mark. Why aren't you getting angry like a normal parent would? I promised myself that I would treat you like real family. But I was more fearful of you starting to hate me. I am such an idiot. I'm so sorry for making you not feel at home. But really, I had no need to get angry. I knew that you were an honest and good girl. You were too good to me. No, oh, I'm sorry too. It was always in the back of my mind. I kept asking why aren't we blood related. I had no reason to worry about that. Because I already knew that you guys were the only people who cared about me this much. Hey mom? Yes? Can I... Come home now. I want to take a break from school today and just spend some quality time with you. Yeah, let's do that. I also was thinking we haven't really spoken that much recently. Are we going to have an issue, Lisa? Could you return Cassandra to me soon? Who are you? Don't play dumb. It's Cassandra's father. I got your number from Cassandra. Oh, is that so? I'll go ahead and say this. I can't allow Cassandra to go back to you. I haven't heard anything from the Child Bureau. So this is all just something you decided on your own, right? I'm sure they'll get in touch with you soon. <laughs> I got a stable job now and I just couldn't afford it at that time. Now I want to live with Cassandra as soon as possible. Why now of all times? Before, the person at the Child Bureau said that they tried contacting you but couldn't reach you. And not having a stable job isn't the reason why you got separated from Cassandra. Your behavior and attitude towards childcare was the problem. Well, like I said before, the problem was that my ex-wife left Cassandra on her own and left to go out somewhere. Do you expect me, a man, to know how to properly raise a kid? The people around us were just too nosy and made a fuss. Because I wasn't taking care of her for just a little while. Cassandra is a middle school student now, so she can do her own thing. As long as I give her money, she'll be fine. <laughs> I definitely cannot hand over Cassandra to you now with your twisted way of thinking. 
If the state says I have to give her up to you, I have no choice. But I have no intention of just giving her to you on just your selfish decision. Should I remind you I'm her legal guardian? You're just a foster parent. Don't you know your place? You should go through the correct procedures then. Having private talks like this is meaningless. Ah, I get it. That I'll wire transfer to you twice the money you're getting now every month. You have no complaints, right? Are you insane? Is it not enough? You're pretty greedy, huh? Seriously? What are you saying? Let me let you in on a secret. I'm actually thinking of making a business with Cassandra. She's grown up to be a beautiful woman, like my ex-wife that ran away. I'm sure she will make a lot of money now if she starts working. If you know what I mean, what do you think? Not too shabby, right? If you give me Cassandra, you can get more money every month without lifting a finger. That's appalling and disgusting. Who in their right mind would ever think of selling their daughter's body for profit? I will report this to the Children's Bureau. What? You're joking, right? Why won't you take the offer? You'll be getting money without having to do anything, right? No matter how much money I get, I won't give up Cassandra. I didn't become Cassandra's foster parent for the money. I think of her as my real family. She is the most important person in the world to me. I want to protect her from anything that might harm her. I can't believe it. She's my kid, you know. You guys aren't even related by blood. I don't believe that you need to be blood related to care for people. Yeah, this is definitely not going to fly. If you're going to keep that stance, I have my own plans. I'm prepared to do anything. Even having her returned by force. Is that a threat? If it's a threat, I'll gladly talk to the police. If you really plan on using Cassandra, I'll fight for her with everything I've got. What the heck is up with you? You can just end all this if you quietly hand her over, no? Why are you so insistent? Even as her real father, you are so clueless. Cassandra isn't some toy to be used. Family isn't there for you to use them. I feel sorry that you lived all your life without being taught that. I don't need your pity. You're trying to make a fool of me. I'm not trying to make a fool of you. I just thought it was sad. I don't know what kind of life you've lived. The only thing I could say is that Cassandra is not the same as you. Everyone has their own thoughts. Everyone's thoughts and personalities are different. Don't act like you control people like that. So what if I do? It's normal for parents to make use of their children. That's how I was taught. So Cassandra should just listen to me because I'm her parent at the end of the day. If you're really deluded into thinking that's how the normal world is like, then I guess I can give you a little sympathy. You ended up like this because no one taught you what love is. Huh? You can't make a living off of love and rainbows. Money reigns supreme. Of course I know that I need money, but I'm just happy that Cassandra is living her best life. I love her to bits and just wish for her happiness in life. If I need money for whatever reason, I just have to work hard for it. I will do that just because I want Cassandra to live a happy and comfy life. Oh, you're a naive idiot. People always end up betraying you in the end anyways. Your own family can't be trusted. Some parents sell their children to cover their debts. I guess there might be some people like that. But those aren't the majority. I want you to know that there are parents who would protect their children. Even if it was in exchange for their own lives. I want you to believe me because I will raise your own flesh and blood daughter Cassandra. With all the love and care I can give her. Just as you wanted your parents to do for you. Won't you let Cassandra experience that herself? After my foster mom and my dad had that conversation, I received a message from the Child Bureau that my father had relinquished custody over me. The fact that he was thinking of selling me makes me never want to forgive him for that. I don't even want to imagine what he was possibly thinking. From the beginning, I never missed my real parents or had any high expectations of them. I definitely have no intention of getting involved with them in the future.
But perhaps just as my foster mom said, I had a drastic change of heart. I thought about that possibility for just a short while. It would be nice if that was the case. And now we are in discussions to change the relationship between us from just being foster parents to having me fully adopted. Life hasn't changed much, but I was happy that I can put this behind me and finally have my own family. After entering junior high school, I had a complex about having foster parents and acted colder towards them. I regret doing something so childish and hurtful. However, I am still just a kid, so I'm sure I might somehow cause trouble in the future. But for now, I am fully embracing all the love and care that my new parents are giving me. My precious mom and dad showed what a true loving family looks like. I'm going to do everything I can to give back the same love they have always given to me.